Okay, a very good evening to one and all. Uh, I hope I'm audible. And please, you know, you can unmute yourself and just confirm that whether I'm audible or not. And uh, yes, you are audible. Okay, great. Thanks, Karan. Um, okay, I'll start sharing my screen then. Um, okay. I hope my screen is visible as well. Now, um, first of all, we'll start by, you know, this uh, concept of enterprise computing as a career. Now, first we need to learn what is uh, enterprise computing. And uh, there are, before that, there are two, uh, so many types of, uh, you know, these uh, careers, like uh, the hybrid cloud or the cloud computing, analytics, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence, internet of things, Android development, iOS development, and many more. So if I say you can have all these working with enterprise computing as well. So basically, enterprise computing or large-scale enterprise computing powers all the major transactions. And mainframe is responsible for 80% of credit card transactions and enables 71% of all Fortune 500 companies. And they are fundamental on how we do business. And IBM Z is the only production mainframe sold today. Virtually everyone depends on it. And this is the introduction to hardware, operating systems, security, and features that, they, that, they, that make this possible. <clears throat> Moving on. So students pursuing careers in technology are focused on five primary things in a potential career. Like we all are still students and pursuing our education. But in the near future, we all want a good salary, a good work-life balance, ability to make a social impact. The next, working on something that aligns with primary interests in technology and job security. So these are the five primary things to you know which we all want in our life. And so, what do professionals who are working in this domain of enterprise computing say about enterprise computing as a career? So, <clears throat> out of like eight, nine, or ten, uh, sorry, out of ten people give a rating of eight, nine, or ten. That is a good work-life balance, seventy percent. In enterprise computing, other computing roles 57%. Similarly, opportunity to work with leading edge tech 70% over here as well. And the next ability to contribute to open source or community groups based on technical skill set is the similar 69%. Then, <clears throat> anybody has heard of mainframe? I don't think so. In these days, you might have heard of it, but let's move forward. So, now let's see on what uh, occurs in one second these days. 5,700 tweets take place in a second. Similarly, 18,500 swipes take place on Tinder. On Snapchat, 20,000 photos are shared. And 63,000 Google searches are done in a second. And uh, 11,57,407 CICS transactions on a mainframe. The basic crux being 11,57,407 transactions take place on a mainframe in just one second. So you may wonder how fast is it? Now. The main question being, what is a mainframe? They are basically data servers that are designed to process up to 1 trillion web transactions daily with the highest level of security and reliability. So much so that it is even you know, considered before cloud computing these days as well, even in the era of cloud computing. Now, we might think wherein we have used a mainframe daily around 30 billion transactions in any form, cash transactions, you know, blockchain transactions, cryptocurrency transactions, any transactions take place. So 30 billion transactions take place, 400 million retail transactions, and 1 million whole lines. This means that we order a product from Amazon, from Flipkart, or we book a hotel on Make My Trip, or, or using any website, we are using a mainframe. We, we might have not realized that, but we have used mainframe some way or the other. Now, in the annual scenario, <coughs> annual scenario 29 billion ATM transactions, 87% of all credit card transactions, and 90% of all airline reservations use a mainframe. Much of the world's critical business and government systems run on IBM Z systems, keeping the economies running, transporting people and goods, and helping us to personally execute the many transactions that constitute our daily lives. Now, mainframe is probably the most underappreciated contributor in today's IT infrastructure as it works 24 cross 7, 365 days a year, often at 100% utilization without ever slowing down, calling in sick or complaining. 
compared to others. It is self-managing, easily follows direction, and is far more efficient and productive than its co-workers. Now, IBM mainframe is a backbone of critical businesses, processes, and our economy. Moving forward, the backbone of world's leading businesses. 23 of the top 25 US retailers use this. 92 of the top 100 worldwide banks use it. 23 out of the 25 of the world's largest airlines use it. And 10 out of the 10 world's largest insurers use mainframes. Now, mainframes process 30 billion transactions per day. I've already told you that, and we have discussed it in pretty length. Now, mainframes enable $6 trillion worth of card payments annually. 80% of the world's corporate data resides or originates on mainframes. 91% of CIOs said new customer facing apps are accessing the mainframe. Now, based on the banker, Systems E installed base in financial records. And based on IBM market development and insights documentations on top 25 ranked by Fortune 500 listing. This is really big, guys. IBM e was ranked in top 25 uh, give, uh, listing given by the Fortune 500 companies. Next, what defines a mainframe? So basically, when we hear mainframe, there are some fundamental truths and beliefs that immediately come to all of our minds. The transactions, it is estimated that 55% of the world's commercial transactions run through the mainframe. Data serving, I've seen numbers that upwards of 70% plus of all commercial data is originated and managed by the mainframe. Trusted and secure computing, transaction integrity, it is always available and gives you highest levels of security and it is almost giving you a limitless scale. Superior economics and efficiency at scale. The same energy footprint for the past four generations of Z while quadrupling. Fact check this one, MIP's capacity. Lowest cost per transaction and as per virtual machine. Now, by 2016, there will be 2.5 billion smartphones in the world. We are currently in 2020, so they might have this number might have gone up to 4 billion. And according to Juniper Research, annual smartphone sales will surpass 1 billion per year. Not to mention billions of sensors, monitoring machines, and infrastructures. So these are a few of the properties of mainframe: transaction processing, data serving, mixed workloads, operational efficiency, trusted, secure computing, reliable, available, and resilient. Virtually limitless scale, as I've already told you. There is no limit to it. It's reliable, it's available, serviceable, it's virtual, virtualizable, clustered, scalability, and security. These are some of the uh, main features of a mainframe. Now, an integrated, highly scalable computer system that allows many different pieces of work to be handled at the same time, sharing the same information as needed with protection, handling very large amounts of information for many users with security without users experiencing any failures in the services. Next, this is the basic what we're going to learn today. Now, uh, in the earlier, in the last, uh, till the last Master of the Mainframe competitions, we were using traditional 3270 computers for participating in this uh, Master of the Mainframe competition. But this year, there has been a change, and we are using Zoe. It is basically integrated with the VS Code uh, IDE developed by Microsoft. So this is going to be much, much more fun for all of us. Now, what is IBM Linux one? I'll come back to this in a moment. working with the hybrid cloud. So there's unparalleled trust and security for mission critical workloads and data. It delivers single point secure management and integration across environments and cloud platforms. It offers agility in operations and development across cloud ecosystem. What is inside a mainframe? Let's look at a picture and it'll make more clear for you. This is the basic picture of a mainframe. I'll give you a more clear one. This basically is what's in a mainframe. This. These many switches, IPDUs, support elements. Now, how to learn about mainframes? There's an IBM Z Academic initiative, which gives you access to materials and systems, open badges, Z Academic cloud access, and master the mainframe, which we are going to discuss today. Now, we can check out these additional resources, and I'll make sure that these resources reach out to each one of you after this meeting ends. This is the IBM ZOS Mainframe Practitioner Professional Certificate on Coursera. 
and uh, it is intended to start a student's career as a ZOS admin system administrator, programmer, DBA, application developer on mainframe. You can earn a badge for every course and a professional certificate when you complete all three. Minimum passing rate for each is 80%. Now let's come on to master the mainframe. Who all can participate? There are two types of sub competitions in master the mainframe. The first one being which is available to us, the students. That is yearly, September to December. There's a worldwide ranking of prizes and a wall of fame. And the second one being the learning system available to professionals or anybody in the world. This is also yearly and remains up and running until September, October. Now, how does it work? Basically, this competition is divided into three parts. The first one being learning the basics. Meet the mainframe and complete step-by-step -step instructions to become familiar with the user interface, basic concepts, and data structures. Basically, this year it's going to be a bit different, but the pattern is going to remain same. The part, uh, part, part two, practice on a Explorer badge and program commands, system setup and navigation, developed with C, Java, COBOL, Assembler, and Rex. Experience IBM Z operating systems, including Linux, ZVM, ZOS, and ZTPA. And third one being trying a challenge and earning an advocate patch. We'll see what the changes are for this year. It's going to be much, much more interesting. This was the user interface for the last year, but this year it has been changed uh, and we, we are using Zoe. Now, recommended skills and career opportunities. We'll definitely come back to this later, but this is really very important for all of us, we being students right now. And uh, just give me a second, guys. I'll again share my screen. Okay, so guys, I hope my screen is visible to all of you. And I would like to welcome you all to master the mainframes competition. This year, we have the same pattern as I said earlier, three levels. We have new technologies and badges which employers want to employ. And the fourth one being the most exciting one for us, prizes. Anyone can participate, but only we, the students, can win the prizes this year. Last year, we had 25,000 plus registrations amongst 154 countries, which is a 37.5% growth from 2018. 4,000 schools and colleges participated, and IBM has a really very interesting initiative. For each level one completed, they feed two children. That is, they fed around 7,000 plus children. And after you complete level one, try and share it with uh, hashtag share the meal on Twitter. These are the winners of 2019. We have a winner as well from India. I think over here, Avishek Sain Sudhir Memorial Institute. So he was one of those who won it last year. Now let's look at the details. The initial one being this year, the competition opens on September 14th. Yes, that date is long gone, but this will close down on January 17th. We are given so many months so that we can complete the levels at our own pace. The next, who can participate in this? Any academic student that is 13 plus. And where? Anywhere from the in the world virtually you can participate. Anyone who is not a student may still complete the challenges and earn the badges, but are not eligible for the prizes. So the 2018 winner said the contest changed the way I look at mainframes. It gave me a glimpse of the future of enterprise computing. Now, why mainframes? I've already told you in the previous uh, presentation that 87% of all credit card transactions and nearly 8 trillion payments a year use mainframes due to the security factor. Then 29 billion ATM transactions each year worth nearly 5 billion per day. Then 68% of the world's population workloads at only 6% of the total IT cost. And two thirds of Fortune 100 use IBM Z, which is a big, big number, sorry, which is a big, big number. 
India when at all uh, uh, had given the statement in 2019, I would like to let you know that IBM mastered the mainframe 2019 with all of you. It was an experience far apart from what I ever dreamt of. It was a mixed delicacy of gaining knowledge, getting support with a purely different horizon of computing. It indeed is a purely different horizon of what the general computing looks like. Like it is not uh, different like uh, web development or app development or machine learning. It is a totally different thing in itself. So we have three levels in this competition, which will run from September 14th, 2020 till January 17th, 2021. And we have level one, wherein we'll be learning the basics of how we can uh, install VS Code on our systems, how we can use Zoe. Then we'll, in the level two, we'll be learning to perfecting our skills and perfecting our skills. And in the level three, there will, there will be a challenge wherein we'll be applying our skills to something more, much more awesome. And the grand challenge being creating something extremely awesome. Here in detail, we have explained what are the first three levels. Now what we'll do, we'll follow the instructions. There is There are clear, clear instructions. I'll be taking you to the website and telling you how we can uh, compete in this competition and you know do something good for this uh, for us. The first one being what we'll do in the level one, we'll follow the directions. That is installing VS Code, log on to a mainframe and answering a few quizzes. Then what we will get, we'll get donation to hashtag share the meal, which being we'll be donating if we complete level one, we'll be donating two meals to underprivileged children. And this initiative has already surpassed to this year. I think it has surpassed around two to 3,000 children already. And UN has also appreciated IBM for this initiative. Now, for every student who finishes level one, a donation will be made to share the meal, one hour of learning, equals two children fed for a day. Main framers for good, that's our motto. Now let's look at the challenges. Now, the first one being we have to open the data set, submit the job and notice a job ID. Basically this is what? Scaffold learning approach, learning a new concept, working example, guided work, figure it out, apply to this to the next, and then again learn a new concept. Now. Part one, we have eight steps approximately, which will take around an hour or two. What is a mainframe? We learn about, about what is a mainframe? How is it special? How is it used? What's an LPAR? How do I connect to the mainframe? And now what? So we learn commands, data sets, hexadecimals, VS code, cooking up codes, looking up codes, I'm sorry. In the part two, we have VS codes Pro tips explaining a few features of VS Code so that we can feel more comfortable and we'll be doing a few of the tasks. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll be seeing in part one and part two the Unix system services, then the Z open automation utilities, Linux on Z. The final part three answers to questions not spelled out in the instructions. We'll be learning about a Rex language, COBOL. We're we'll learning about Zoe CLI, Ansible, and the final challenge. Now, let's go to master the mainframe's website. This is the master the mainframe's website, masterthemainframe.com, as simple as that, nothing fancy. We have IBM Z plus VS Code. We have tech skills to learn, badges to win, prizes to win, invite only events, as well as jobs on this. We'll be skilling up on JCL, Ansible, Python, Unix, COBOL, and Rex. There are three levels, and there are thousands of jobs available here around the world. You may check out sample internships over here. IBM Biz, there was this link. IBM.biz slash IBM Z <clears throat> hyphen jobs. So these are the jobs, main frame of jobs that are, that are there in IBM Z, Luxoft. There are too many jobs like Infosys, mainframe testing, JP Morgan, Cognizant, and so on. So 
so yeah we were here now till now i think yeah we have fed around three three five six children thanks to level one finishers we've already had a discussion on this that we have it opens on september 14th and closes on january 17th this in 2021 13 plus you need to be and you can compete from anywhere virtually why mainframes you have discussed this point and these are the prizes level one you may feed two children if you complete the level one for level two you the prizes you get is a special guest event gain access into exclusive online career development activity featuring access to employers and career opportunities then on the level two ibm master the mainframe badge certifying your skills which you can share on linkedin and any other platform you want and finally we have a chance to enter into the 45 500 e-gift cards to win And as far as level three is concerned, limited edition IBM 2020 Master the Mainframe T-shirt and industry recognized. This one is really important, guys. Industry recognized level three IBM Master the Mainframe badge. Two top individuals from each region, $2,500 stipend to visit IBM event in your region and meet with key executives and employers. And top three individuals globally, $1,000 USD education scholarship, which is like around 75,000 Indian rupees. These are going to be the judges for this year, just for information. And this is Krem Dale Krem, and the most of mastery of the mainframe. This is the 2020 Wall of Fame. And these are the past winners. This is 2019 India winner, the Vancho Singh from UPES College. And we have global meetups as well. And now let's look at the FAQs a bit. Master the mainframe competition is comprised of three levels. Why should I compete? Awesome prizes are also there. You can obtain unprecedented exposure to wide variety of enterprise systems, software, and products. Also earn enterprise computing open badge to put on a resume or social media pages. So potential employers can find you easily. Okay, so now let's see how can we register. Click on get started. So the first one being you need to visit masterthemainframe.com, then click on get started. Now, when you open it for the first time, you'll have to, you have to sign up for an IBM ID. You have to put up your email, your first name, last name, password, your country of origin, and a bit of additional information, and then verify your email. But as far as I'm concerned, I've already have an IBM account. I'll just put it and share with you. Okay, so I have just put up my email ID and password for this competition. Each time you log in or the first time you sign up, it will ask you a question. Are you a student at an accredited academic institution? It is yes. And will you be aged over 13 on January 17, 2021? And yes. Continue. Now it will take you to your target page, the home page for your profile. This is my home page, which you're currently viewing. I've completed level one until now and will be beginning with level two shortly. Now, um, okay. Now, whenever you uh, open this, you have a level one point of welcome to master the mainframe. So this is basically it. They'll ask you to complete a few of the tasks like installing, installing a VS code on your system. And then um, installing first of all installing vs code then using zoe to connect to uh, a mainframe and then use it to complete the tasks assigned as, as follows now let's jump back to the ppt earlier that i was showing
Okay, now let's learn about Zoe. This is the first open source project based on ZOS. Zoe provides solutions that allow development and operations teams to securely manage, control, script, and develop the mainframe like any other cloud platform. It has the ability to attract new people, demystify the Z platform, enhance integration and consumability, promote open source or open community of practice, reduce the learning curve, improve productivity, modern platform neutral interfaces, so basically this is this is was this was the browser based web desktop for using a mainframe this is node.js based command line and this one being the zos rest api api mediation layer so it has it simplifies your architecture reduces the operational overhead improve coexistence enable rich ecosystem of free and commercial solutions Zoe mission statement is articulated in the three points highlighted in the slides. That is attracting new people, reducing the learning, reduce the learning curve, and simplify the architecture. It was created in order to attract new people on the platform, and mainframe is frequently perceived as a black box where deep skills are required to interact with it, and it's difficult to be integrated with hybrid cloud application. Zoe wants to demystify the Z platform, enhance integration and consumability of the platform providing a standard access to the platform and finally promote open community of practice. Moving forward, we can become an advocate as well. What it, what it does mean to be an IBM, IBM Z champion, evangelize and advocate for IBM. We can help and nurture and grow the community. This IBM badge recognizes IBM champion skills, not only in champions area of technical expertise, but also one who influences, mentors, others and mentors others through blogging, speaking at conferences, moderating forums, leading user groups, and authorizing books or articles. Now I would request Karan to please uh, give us a bit of insight into what is cloud computing and how Azure is trying to make cloud computing a bit more easier for all of us. Karan, please begin. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Karan and uh, I am also a MSLA, Microsoft Student Learn Ambassador uh, and friend of uh, Pruptej. And uh, I'm from Gurtek Bahadur Institute of Technology only, uh, one of uh, you in fourth year. And uh, my primary interest has always been the cloud computing. Uh, I've done cloud computing with the uh, various uh, public cloud platforms like uh, Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services and uh, Google Cloud Platform and had various projects in it. So basically, uh, I'm going to give a gist of cloud computing to you all. So cloud computing is basically everything that you uh, own in a physical computer, that may be a storage, that may be a processing, any anything like that, and uh, just making it available on the internet through uh, through uh, using a like a gateway to access those services. When you, uh, most of you or any of you have, uh, whenever, gone to a cloud computing, public cloud computing website, you mo must have encountered uh, that on the top right hand side, uh, there will be an option to change your region. In these regions, it uh, there are big data centers in a region like uh, in India, there will be a data center for Amazon, Google and Microsoft, one data cent uh, center of each. And um, uh, those places contain various uh, computing parts like uh, a processor, a storage part, and everything that may be uh, may be offered by a cloud service, and uh, you can connect uh, connect or uh, use those services through their cloud platform. So basically, um, we will be talking about uh, Microsoft uh, Microsoft services like uh, Microsoft Azure, and why it's making easy because uh, uh, services nat natively are available in their raw form. Like if you want uh, you uh, want to use a server. Uh, there uh, you you could straight away use us uh, you could straight away rent a server from Microsoft, microsoft's azure and uh, uh, nothing would be required but there is a big thing that if you want uh, the purpose of taking that server uh, for example you want to host a website okay and uh, for that you need to write a backend code to run it on the server and all the work needs, needed to be done by you but microsoft also offers a service uh, in which uh, you just need to upload your source code for the website and uh, uh, automatically the website gets hosted. So Microsoft basically takes away the work uh, required by uh, majority of the work required for the developer and uh, places in hands for uh, in hands for you. Uh, this is also known uh, known as um, uh, software as a service. 
that means you only have to uh, do um, a portion of the work required to host that website and uh, nothing much and uh, uh, most of my friends when uh, I, I told them that i learn about cloud computing they used to say only about uh, oh that must, must be about cloud storages because we always associate cloud with the storage the storage but actually cloud provides many more things uh, other than storage as well you can host uh, you can host a server you can even host a, uh, a personal computer as well i've done a, done a thing as well in which uh, you can basically do a, own a computer on a cloud platform and uh, uh, run it like a normal normal desktop if your computers for example cannot run uh, specific softwares you can actually rent a, a personalized computer from uh, from any website and uh, run it as your own just you will be requiring an internet uh, in recent times specifically with the launch of the next gen consoles uh, and uh, and last year also with google stadia cloud cloud computing has also transformed gaming as well basically you are not required to invest in uh, hardware for any gaming console or uh, like any gaming computer or you can just uh, use uh, services like google stadia and microsoft's game pa game pass services to just access those uh, gaming services and uh, run on your uh, basically any device without using any processor but you will be requiring a internet connection to do that and cloud computing is basically very useful for uh, organizations that are very small like startups uh, small startups which do not have enough uh, uh, enough uh, enough capital to generate in a, generate enough infrastructure because uh, and and company like uh, protest said uh, uh, big companies use mainframe computers to store and process their data but if uh, that uh, requires a lot of investment for uh, a small for a small startup so a small startup can what can he do uh, for example he could take a server from microsoft azure uh, and uh, a storage service from them and uh, a network infrastructure from them and basically start uh, start deploying their application or a website pretty easily and uh, they uh, the best part of the cloud services is that you only have to pay for what you use you don't have to pay the whole cost of the infrastructure uh, you only have to pay the amount of thing you have used for example the uh, computer it is used approximately 12 hours a day so you have to pay only a, a fees for 12 hours not 24 hours that's the best thing about cloud computing it's pay as you go uh, in the concept we use as for cloud computing so uh, uh, it also knows that pego pego and uh, future for cloud computing is bright as ever i think so Karan, uh, sorry to stop you, but this is the best point which you made out is that uh, the companies who are not able to afford the on-site infrastructure, they go for cloud computing. But the big yes. com companies that the Fortune 500 ones or companies such as Amazon, sorry, uh, or Amazon or Google or any big, you know, the companies who have a good turnover for the year, they go for their own infrastructure. But for the companies who have sh small turnovers or don't want to invest into all this, they go for cloud computing services. Yeah, and in, in fact, the best thing about uh, many cloud computing platforms is that they provide certain uh, benefits as well. For uh, one year or so, uh, you get a certain perks for uh, for free. Like uh, in uh, Microsoft, also offers a certain limit of uh, free uh, usable credits, uh, which you can uh, approximately ten thousand rupees per month that you can use for cloud computing uh, for one year uh, when you are starting with the cloud. Uh, and my personal experience as well, uh, I've done approximately three internships, uh, all of them with a startup, and all of them uh, are embracing cloud computing, uh, uh, cloud computing for their future needs. Uh, uh, up to you, Proptej. Yeah. Uh, so, Karan, uh, basically, what the inf we can infer is that uh, the final inference we can take is that both have their own advantages as well as disadvantages. The advantage of mainframe being that mainframes have an utmost, you know, utmost level of security, which sometimes cloud computing services can't even guarantee. You know, yes. they, they, they can, there can be a breach in their own data servers. You cannot guarantee a security in cloud computing services. But as far as mainframes are concerned, they are remote, they are on-site, they're in your own office or in a, in a secured air conditioned room. A, uh, yes. air conditioner room that's so that's what, uh, the best uh, point about mainframes many companies are uh, adapting a hybrid approach as well for example yeah. they are 
the critical data may be stored on their mainframe computers and the for cost saving they they shifted other things which are not uh, critical for security they may sh shift that to a public cloud platform yeah so uh, that that's the best thing uh, because it's uh, you're getting security as well and uh, cost savings as well which uh, which is a win win situation for uh, the company see like companies like ibm even they are also you know moving to the hybrid cloud system they have uh, and they have their own mainframes they are building mainframes for their customers like you know the fortune 500 companies or the other big companies but uh, they are themselves also moving on to this hybrid cloud structure of providing an ibm cloud as well so that some of their they can increase their customer base yes in, indeed uh, i think the as the technology develops and uh, everything the as you uh, showed number of tweets number of pictures and all the number of data being processed each second would increase exponentially in the coming time and coming time, yeah uh, and mainframes and cloud computing both will in hand in hand will help in the development of technology and ha help our future needs without them i don't think human civilization can progress i think yeah both of them have their own importance and to all the participants this competition of master the mainframe this is a really very good uh, initiative by ibm of doing a kind of a social service as well as uh, making the children and the participants learn about uh, the good old technology of mainframes which is still very very relevant and has so many so many and so many employment opportunities that i can't even comprehend them and similarly cloud computing is a new technology like it is it has been around like for the past 4 or 5 years but it's uh, okay guys we have uh, misty decker from ibm as well here i'll turn on my video for a second hello misty hi how are you doing fine just about to wrap up the event but thanks you came on my request <laughs> i'm i'm happy to it sounds like you all had a chance to learn a little bit about mainframes and some about cloud computing so i i thought i would come in and tell you a little bit about how mainframes are a part of cloud computing would that be good yeah please go on oh great so um, the vast majority of clouds, especially public clouds, are built with commodity x86 servers. And that's because they're very affordable and you network them together in, um, in the cloud computing format. However, a lot of big companies are using mainframes as the basis for uh, a piece of their cloud. And that is because mainframes have a superior security features that any other x86 server has. And so they can leverage that extra security um, as a cornerstone of their cloud. And even IBM uses our mainframe as a superior feature that we call HyperProtect services for our public cloud. We also use it for the foundation for our blockchain services in our public cloud. So we select those functions and those, those capabilities in the cloud computing paradigm that really can leverage the unique capabilities of the mainframe. And let me, let me just explain a little bit about how the mainframe hardware itself is different from x86 hardware. And that is, in most servers you have a number of cores or processors and then they share services uh, they'll share io cards they'll share encryption cards to do the data serving on the io card or to do the encryption for the encryption card and in the mainframe every single processor every single core has its own dedicated coprocessor to do nothing but IO. And every single processor has its own dedicated coprocessor to do nothing but encryption. And what that means is from a data serving point of view, it's much, much faster because it's never ever waiting for data. That data is so fast 
that the processor is kept busy 100% of the time. It's never waiting. And when we added the encryption coprocessor, what that meant was we could create something called pervasive encryption, where at the hardware layer, we can turn on encryption that happens 100% of the time, and the keys are managed, the encryption keys are managed at the hardware layer, so there's no changes to the application layer. So that data can be encrypted all of the time, and there's no changes necessary to the applications. We've also implemented something called secure service container, and that's really important in the cloud environment. In every cloud, the cloud administrator, that systems administrator, has to have access to the data that's in that cloud in order to manage it and to move it around, right? So your data in an Amazon Web Services cloud is being managed by employees at Amazon. And you trust them to do so because they're a legit company, right? So you wouldn't use a public cloud from um, Misty's I'm definitely not stealing your data cloud, right? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't trust me for good reason. You shouldn't. So um, what we have with Secure Service Container is we're able to create a container that we can make available in a cloud that only you can access the data in that container. But the company that owns that cloud can move that container around, can make that container bigger or smaller, um, but the encryption prevents our employees from being able to see your data. And that is what's underneath our HyperProtect services. That is a premium service you can purchase in our IBM public cloud, and we have a whole incubator program where small startups are that are very interested in making sure their data is protected, like finance startups, financial mm -hmm. startups, or healthcare startups. Um, they use HyperProtect services so they can comply with laws um, and be more protective of their clients' data and provide a premium service to their clients. So the HyperProtect services is their way of saying, even if my data is hosted in the United States and I'm in India and the United States government has an interest in my business, even if the United States government subpoenas IBM, we would not be able to hand over your data. We do not have access to it. Your data is protected from uh, an IBM employee being bribed. They still can't get your data. There's, I call this the no Edward Snowden effect, right? If you know Edward Snowden, he was um, a US government employee and he was a systems administrator. He had no reason to see that data that he stole and he made public. Um, so if that data, if that information were stored in a secure service container, Edward Stone, as the systems administrator, would have had no visibility to it and would not have been able to steal it and make it public. So. This is the unique proposition, the unique feature that we have in the mainframe and how it intersects with cloud. And I think I, I hope now you can see why businesses are very interested in having a lot of their stuff managed by x86 because it is cheaper. Um, you know, it's quick to deploy. You just buy another server, you pop it in there and you run. But their premium data and their most important services and their core centralized data they put on a mainframe um, with one of these extra security features. Are there any questions mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. So basically, IBM has also launched its cloud recently. Like, I've been receiving emails from IBM with regards oh. to launch, that they have launched a cloud, and you should be the first one to register for that. And uh, so, yeah, I get that the basic thing that being the most secure, the data which you want to be the most secure, that should be put on a mainframe. And 
the data which can be a little, little less secure that can go on the cloud is that the case or it, is it for the you know the uh, the uh, the startups having low low turnovers so it really comes down to you as the owner of the data to decide what's important to you right um, we do charge more for hyper-protect services because you're getting more, right? And you need to decide, is the data that I have um, protected enough with the basic cloud, or do I need the extra protection that hyper-protect services offers? And that's really what it comes down to. Understood, yeah. That was really insightful. Oh, right. regarding cloud and mainframe like right. thank you so and much for coming over Bl blockchain is put on the mainframe as well for those additional security features so we have um uh, let me see it's there's the food trust we have a number of blockchain services that we provide in the ibm cloud and they're all hosted on our mainframe services as well um and and that is not just for the security but also for the speed of io because as you know blockchain is data intensive okay. or processing intensive right yeah so it really needs that that io speed that only the mainframe can offer mainframe can offer definitely yeah okay. thank you so very much misty for coming over and giving absolutely. us absolutely <laughs> so nice to see you all i hope you join master of the mainframe um register right this second so that you can start getting notices uh, from us we have some fun events plans coming up um and i will tell you that we are working on some really extra special connections to employers this technology is very important to the world's largest companies and they struggle to find people with these skills so they actively seek out anyone that has ever earned a master of the mainframe badge and they send you messages saying would you please consider applying for our position so um we're standing up a number of events where anyone who has earned a master of the mainframe badge gets exclusive access to employers looking for these students so register now um so that you'll be notified of when those things are happening uh, we'll let you know, even if you haven't earned your badge yet, if you earn it by this date, you will be able to be invited to this event. So just at least register for the platform so that you get notified. So great. Thanks Thank so much, Misty. And enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> All right, take care. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. So, that was a really insightful talk from Misty. I would like to thank everyone for coming over. And I'll end this event on a high. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending this event. Thanks, Karan. Especially, special thanks to you. Thanks, Praptesh, for uh, inviting me. It was uh, an honor for me. And if you guys have any doubt relating to cloud, uh, uh, you can take my number from Praptesh, OK? Yeah, and for the mainframes, you can contact me if you have any doubt regarding master the mainframe. And try to at least register and complete level one. Level one is nothing but an hours activity, but it can help feed two children. Thank you so very much, all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.